maybe you took a break from brewing or you just never got around to making that next jar of kombucha and you want to see if your scoby's still alive. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you do that. And you can also use this method if you just need more starter tea. As an example, I'm going to use the jar that I keep in my cabinet for scobies and whatever other things that I may need. So I have a decent amount of scoby in there. Let's see if I can <laughs> do this. I was putting these in the smoothies and the, uh, into smoothies during the summer, and it's January now, so it's been sitting for a while. Hopefully, you guys can see that. But what's more important is the starter tea, and I have about two ounces of starter tea, so that's what about a, a quarter cup of starter, and it's strong starter. You can tell from smelling, it smells like vinegar, but I want more. So let's go ahead and use this method. You can use this method if you just left your SCOBY in the cabinet or on the, on the counter and you just don't know if it's good. If you put your SCOBY and starter tea in the refrigerator, maybe someone gifted you a SCOBY and starter tea and you just never got around to making the kombucha with it. Or if you have a SCOBY but no or very little starter tea. First thing you want to do is put it in a clean jar Let's just start off good, put it in a fresh clean jar, and then we're going to make a cup of fresh sweetened tea. So for the amount of starter tea that I have, because it's not a lot, I'm going to use about eight ounces of water, one tea bag, for this I'm using green tea just because I have an extra green tea bag, and a quarter cup of sugar. And that is a lot of sugar, but remember all we're doing is we're feeding the SCOBY and starter tea that we have. Then I'm going to add my fresh sweetened tea to my SCOBY and starter tea that I do have. I'm going to cover it like I would any normal jar of kombucha, put a closure around it and leave it on the counter for two weeks. So this will give you time to see if it's still alive and how will you know if it's still alive? For one is the tea starts to turn a little murky and the color changes a little bit lighter. But the biggest one is seeing when a new SCOBY forms on top and that can take up to two weeks, sometimes sooner, right? When you see the little bubbles on top or the SCOBY where it's first it's like shiny and then it gets a little thicker and then it's opaque. That will be the indicator if the scoby is good or not. If nothing happens or if you see mold, then it didn't work and you're going to have to toss all that and get some new starter tea and scoby. Most of the time you will get a nice fresh scoby and then you're good to go. You can use that new scoby or the old scobies that you first put in there and the starter tea to get your batch going. If you put your scoby in the refrigerator and you're testing to see if it's still alive, you have some different, there's a little bit different of a procedure. So take your scoby and starter out of the refrigerator and leave it on the counter for about two weeks, depending on the weather. So it's January right now where I'm at, it's pretty cold, well, I guess where everyone's at, but it's pretty cold in my area, right? It's in the thirties. Leave that on the counter for a couple weeks because what happens when you put kombucha in the fridge is the bacteria and yeast start to go dormant. So they're not working, they're kind of like sleeping. If you took it out from the fridge and put the sweet tea right in there right away, there's a good chance you would get mold because the bacteria is not awake to do its job. So leave it out on the counter for a couple weeks, then add your sweetened tea. We're going to check on this in a couple days to see how our scoby's grown. It's been exactly one week since we added fresh sweetened tea to our existing scoby and starter tea that we had. And um, let me give you a close up look here. There's some yeast at the bottom, but what's most important and how we know the SCOBY is still alive is because the new baby SCOBY that's forming on top. If this was dead, then a new SCOBY would not be forming and it might have even shown signs of mold already. So as you can see, it's not really thick. It's still pretty thin, but it's there. Got some bubbles on the top, so we have some carbonation. So another sign that our ferment's working. At this point, you could either Continue to let the baby grow. Uh, <laughs> you can continue to let the baby scoby grow even thicker, or if you're just looking for the starter tea, then you're good. I am going to test the pH on this. I wish I would have remembered to. I wish I would have remembered to do that when I added the tea, the, the new fresh tea. Uh, but I just thought of it today. Here is my pH meter. I can put a link for it down below. I don't remember where I got it from. Turn it on. Looks like we're at 3.08. So I was a little concerned with that reading 
It should have been below three. I decided to check my pH meter and a way you can test your pH meter is by placing it into white vinegar, which has a pH of 2.5. And the reading is coming up. So this is the cup on the right. The reading is coming up 2.61. So it's about 10 points off, which means the cup on the left, which is our SCOBY and starter tea, should be under three. So I'm gonna go ahead and calibrate that today. But when in doubt, you can always let it sit another week. It, it doesn't hurt. It's just gonna make it stronger, more resilient, and better starter tea and SCOBY. If you're curious what my kombucha is at right now, let's check it. This kombucha is raspberry elderflower, very tasty by the way. And it's about two weeks old. It's been in the second ferment bottles. I opened it three days ago and I've been sipping on it since. Three is still a good pH, but I like my pH to be under, uh, under three. And that's one of the great things about kombucha. If you're unsure, just give it more time and you'll get the answer. So what I mean by that is just let your, your jar sit out a little bit longer and you know that it's gonna get stronger because it's gonna to continue to ferment. And as it continues to ferment, the pH will get lower. So if I didn't have a pH meter, I would give this another week. Don't forget to a pop, 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 pop. That like button. So I have some good news and I just got it yesterday. If you need a SCOBY, I'm your girl. I am your girl. And what I mean by that is, I just got my business license yesterday to sell kombucha, which includes selling SCOBY candy and selling my SCOBY. So I wanted to do this. I had the idea back in the summer. It's January now. I finally got all my ducks in a row and my SCOBYs are now for sale. So with that comes a SCOBY, about four ounces and eight ounces of starter tea. I didn't want to sell large SCOBYs because it's going to increase the shipping costs for you. I don't have my store set up yet. I'm going to work on that soon. Um, if I do have it set up, depending on when you're watching this video, the link will be down below and, or you can just shoot me an email, which I'll put down below. Elizabeth Sullivan, 1203 at gmail.com. Really excited about this, but please know you don't have to buy a SCOBY. You can absolutely grow your own SCOBY from any type of kombucha. The reason that it's recommended you don't, you always use raw kombucha is because a lot of the kombucha that you get in the stores is pasteurized. So to pasteurize the kombucha, you put it at high temperatures, which kills the bacteria and yeast, the good stuff, the probiotics that we want. One of the reasons we drink kombucha. So it is best to get unpasteurized kombucha. Mine has never been pasteurized. Um, I'm going to put together a video explaining my SCOBY and the lineage of my SCOBY. But in the meantime, just reach out to me if you're interested. If you're wondering where I got this adorable kombucha shirt, you can get that on my shop. I put a together a bunch of different designs and they are adorable. So I hope you like them. Links below. In the meantime, check out this video about how to care for your SCOBY. And then down below here is a video on how to care for your SCOBY hotel. I actually have two videos on SCOBY hotels. I'll link them all down below in the description box. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll see you in the next video.